Mm -hmm. So this is for Dick Yak, is that right? Yeah, okay. Hello? Hello? Hello, okay. My voice wasn't on, okay. Hello. Hello. I guess we're still waiting, huh? Yes, a few more minutes. Okay. I was baking. I have my apron on. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <clears throat> so where are you zooming in from? Arizona. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm on Long Island, New York. Okay. Marnie. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. I don't know where all the rest of the pictures went. <laughs> mm.
Mom, I'm I have my microphone muted. We should all have our microphones muted so that when it starts, we hear what's going on. Oh, and they don't get interference from us. OK, Great. OK, thank you. Hello. Hello. So right now they can hear us because uh, I unmuted it. Okay. Could you, Alec, could you dedicate this as the only microphone? I don't know how to do that. Okay. Because I'm trying to... Um, I haven't had much time to seem like... Uh, yeah, do you need me? Are we ready? No, we got the microphone. They can hear us now. So... Everybody on the Zoom, you can hear me? It's really good. Okay, yeah. So if they want to talk, if anybody here wants to talk, then we can have them come up here by the computer. Is the resistance ready? It's, I mean, it says it's, I'm sharing the screen. They can, you can see it uh, okay. it's on his thing, and he can hear me talking. Yeah, so... Uh, when you're ready, I can just you can talk, and then I'll 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 hit the buttons. And I want to be able to see them too at the same time when we start. Can we pull it off the slideshow on me for now. Yeah, it's gonna overlay though. Yeah, I want to be able to see that. Are we muted right now too? No, they can hear us. Tell <laughs> me. Okay, they can hear you. Can me at once. Dan Roberts in the house. It's awesome. It's a great idea. Is it your idea? Yeah. 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 Um, so where's the mute button? I turned down the volume here. You can probably turn that up. I'm going to turn it up. Barbara Ostry, Susan, wow. Mark Alenowitz, Susan Harper. I can't hear any of you, but thanks for being there. This is really different. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I don't want to mute myself. Well, we can hear you just fine. Okay. They should be able to. All right. Denise, Pat. They may be. Watch. So you can see that they're muted. No, our cow. Hey, bro. Hi, hey. hi, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Did we turn up my volume here? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Don't need that one, you know. Can you use a phone and narrate? No, you can just talk and, and just as long as you're nearby, they can hear you. Can we put this up there for a second? This? Yeah, just so everybody here can see who's participating. Yeah, give me a for your base and all.
Mr. Burns, can you hear me? I think we're going to turn off volume off. Please. Hey, okay, Mark. Tommy Neville. Michael. Tolu. We got Africa on. Wow. She's just opening her own computer. Can everybody hear me? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Captain yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I can. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here, for your patience. Thanks to you, Jamie. Okay. So what, what I think I'll do is introduce them real quick to the people here. Yeah, we can go into the slideshow. Got it. Okay. So I don't need to hold a phone. No, just talk in here because yeah. everybody can hear you uh, you right now. So uh, the microphone's going to pick, uh, pick you up because when we're talking, we're not even near the laptop and I'll pick it up. Okay. So I was picking so we just gotta just gotta have a nice speaking voice, loud. Okay. Just think Some of these people here. Yeah. Okay. And everybody. Samuel L. Jackson, just think about him. <laughs> okay. Well, if I sit there on me, are you able to stand by? And... I I could just be on my knee and do my thing. Okay. Because I'll sit, I'm gonna I guess move the slides myself or you know. Okay. So okay. okay. Great. But my flight was great. All right. Yeah. All right. About the stars, about the stars. All right. Well, uh, that's all. Thanks for being here. I'm celebrating a life for Richard Yeck. I'll try to get through this without crying. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What we have here, we're in Fort Lauderdale. I don't know if you can see everybody that's gathered. Is that better? There oh, we go. Better. Much better. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. These are all the Italians I've been trying to hurt lately. So we are here 20 something, and I don't know how many we are on screen 20 something, but this is for Richard Yet. He passed away on Tuesday night at 11 30. And uh, so I'm going to do a slideshow. Uh, thank you for being there remotely. I got to be on screen. And uh, afterward, if you'd like to say something, uh, you'll have an opportunity to. So, hey, Mark Katz from Denmark. Thanks for being on. And everybody out there, Graham, Frank, and Mom. So I'll sl show some slides, just an overview of Dad's life with some pictures. And then you'll have an opportunity to say something. And then uh, we can stay on as long as we want to uh, talk about old times. Mm -hmm. um, this is a lot of uh, my mom's side of the family. It's great to see the Siri side, the X side on the screen. But uh, without further ado, here comes mom now. That's great. Thank you all so much for being here. Linda David, too. Wow. Great to see you. Joni. You too. All right. We've got Africa. We've got Denmark. We've got a lot of people on the line. All right. So, can we go to the first slide? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if Josie's on, but wow. Denise and Pat. Susan. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to try to keep it light so I don't cry, but uh, there's Pop on the screen. And oops, sorry about that. So yeah, we just turned sound off. There we go. Okay. And can you all still hear me? Yes. Okay, so next slide. So, uh, yeah, we got it. Okay, so Richard Yeck was the son of uh, James Jack Othello Yeck. Sometimes he went by Othello, sometimes by Jack, never by James. He married Virginia Ann Siri. Those are our grandparents. Of course, we're at Dana's house now, Ken. So when I say me, it also means Dana's grandparents. And uh, there's my dad uh, in his Navy uniform on the bottom. We do have, I think, uh, Uncle Gene, Malcolm Eugene Yek's uh, daughter on this call too, hopefully. Next slide. So there's my grandmother, our grandmother on the left, Virginia, and uh, Othello Yek on the right. I think that's his high school graduation picture. And there's Pop in the middle holding a picture of himself as a baby. Glenn, I hate to be the guy to interrupt your uh, slideshow, but you're not changing the slide. slide. Okay. Super. So yeah. they gave up the farm. What does that mean? Um, the Yeks were in Concord, Illinois. They had a farm. 
Uh, my great grandfather stepped on a rusty nail and uh, he died shortly thereafter. I think of was it tetanus or something? Yeah, yeah. typhoid. True. So they Glenn, gave him a farm and they Glenn, wrote you hear Albuquerque. Us? I'm not sure why. They might have been giving Glenn. away free land at that time, the early 1900s, that you could homestead on. Hey, Glenn. Um, the family Glenn, the slides aren't working. He settled in New Mexico. Next slide. <laughs> Glenn. So, uh, on the Siri side, this is my grandmother's side. Her parents were Catherine Peach and Thomas Siri. Thomas Siri, I think, had just come from Ireland, or his father had settled in the U.S. from Ireland. They ran a hotel in the land. Land, we can't hear you. In front of the hotel. Uh, can not see. Having can not see. Next slide. Glenn. Can not see. Yeah. We can't see the slides, Glenn. We only see you. Oh, they call me? Something comes out. Oh, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Glenn? We can hear you, but we can't see you. Playing. I'll try to tell you that, but I think I'm muted. Uh, oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm just playing currently. Where should I go back to? The beginning. We always see you for the beginning. Uh, yeah. So are we for Jack? Are we screen sharing? Let me try to press it. Through. Like it's not going side to slide for us. It's just staying on the first slide. Oh, There's something wrong with your screen showing. First screen sharing. Okay. Let me, Jamie, can you stay on April? I just stay on April. Can you hear this? Just need to share. Oh, all right. Those three books. It's a Microsoft. So hey, Mark, we have an extra one. <laughs> Mark. 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 Okay. Of course, everybody else on mute. Put everybody else on mute. Put yourself on mute. There you go. Hey, Glenn, I'm seeing it now. Yes, I'm seeing it too. The first one. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. All right, let me make sure the mic is on. Yep, it's on. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Susan, can you hear me? Yeah. Lunch, can you hear I me? Can hear you. Yeah, yes, I can. Yes. I can hear you, but I can't you hear me? see your pictures. Yep. All right. They can? Yeah. I can. Sorry, guys. Thank you, Mark Lenowitz, for calling in to help us out. Um, so I'm going to start this slide over, but James, Jack, Othello, Yak, and Virginia Ann Siri are our grandparents. They had uh, Richard Yak down in the lower left. And Malcolm Eugene Yek, uh, uh, my great uncle, may have his daughter might be on on this call. Find out. She's she's going to try to join. Next slide. So that's Virginia on the left and Othello on the right. His high school graduation picture. We're not sure if he graduated. It says left class there. I think above the picture of my dad in the middle, and that's my dad there holding a picture of himself uh, as an infant. Okay. Next slide. So they gave up the farm. Uh, they, uh, my great grandfather had a farm in Concord, Illinois. He died after he stepped on a rusty nail and got the tetanus or typhoid. Tetanus. tetanus. And then uh, they resettled in Albuquerque. Drove cross country. Uh, I think somebody had a broken leg when they were driving across the country, sitting out of a car. Um, that's a good story. Maybe uh, cousin Lynn can talk about that. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Uh, so. Thomas Siri had come from Ireland. I think his dad was uh, first generation. He married Catherine Peach. I think they were 24 years apart. I'm not sure, but uh, they ran a hotel in Berlin, New Mexico, where a lot of the Siri settled and where some cousins still live. Go ahead. Next slide. Yeah. So there's the 10 children um, with the names on the bottom. Uh, Virginia, my grandmother, our grandmother's on the lower left. That's my dad's mom. 
And Catherine Peach in the center in the on the bottom row was a two-time Mother of the Year winner for the state of New Mexico. I think in consecutive years. So as she was running a hotel and bringing up 10 kids. Next slide. Um, Kids. There's a look at the immediate family tree. Virginia Siri is there on the top right. Of course, Mary James, Jack Othello, yeah. Next slide. Um, the series were all good athletes, six brothers, uh, you know, six great uncles I had. Um, even the women were good athletes. That's Aunt Georgia down there on the bottom with me, dad, and cousin Al. And you can see the gym at this high school is named after a Siri, you know, a coach and, uh, and a teacher. Next slide. The right color. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my grandfather and my father a couple of years apart. You can see the car. I think, I don't know if that was their car behind uh, them on the left, but you can tell what era it was, certainly. Next slide. Yeah. Why? Yeah. So my dad was an only child and you know, he had six uncles that were great athletes that taught him to play football, basketball, a lot of other sports. But when he didn't have anybody to play catch with, he would throw the ball up on the roof and then run, practice pass pattern and go catch it. And throughout his life, he was always sort of, he was never bored. I never knew him to be bored. Here he is playing checkers with himself. You know? <laughs> with dementia, you know, he's like, this is like two years ago, 84 years old with dementia. He's still, you know, trying to engage his mind playing checkers, you know, amazing. Next slide. Um, so he became a fitness instructor at Vic Taney. I think Vic Taney eventually got bought out by Gold's Gym. But he was always in pretty good shape. Yeah. And if you'd ask him how he got in good shape, he'd say partly because in eighth grade, his father pulled him out of school one day a week. And they were trying to set up a soda pop uh, distrib distribution business. And my dad would have to climb these towers with like 40 pound sacks of sugar over his back Dude. and climb back down and then unload a truck like that. I'm driving all around Santa Fe and Albuquerque. They'd leave at like five in the morning and get back at like 10 at night. And then he had to make up his schoolwork, but he said it gives you good pipes. I don't know. It's like, it's a trip, you know? Um, can everybody hear me still just checking? Yep. Okay. Okay. Next slide. So dad always loved to be one of the guys. He joined the Navy when he left Albuquerque. He graduated in 1960, I think, from UNM with a geology degree. Became uh, an intelligence officer on the USS Constellation with VA-75 Sunday Punchers. We might do some trivia after this, so remember water names, Sunday Punch. There he is on the left with a bunch of uh, Italian family out here in Florida. Go ahead. Um, became a ballroom dancer or something I think he did his whole life. Maybe his aunts taught him how to dance, but there he is in a picture, and they, I think that's the Albuquerque Journal um, before the Senior Olympics, I think, and he wound up winning a medal in the Senior Olympics. Susan's on the call, too. Maybe she can tell us about a little bit more about that later. But there he is on the right when he moved to San Diego. Still, I think he's 84 right there. Still loving to do some ballroom dancing. Next slide. He was really active in the community. He wound up working at the University of New Mexico, helping them catalog rocks. He loved geology, he loved his rocks, he loved his mountain. And uh, he actually chaired, I think, please correct me if I misspeak, anybody who's listening, but chaired the Albuquerque Archaeological Society. He would write letters to the Albuquerque Journal, letters to the editor, really engaged. He volunteered for a senator up in Santa Fe. And anybody later can comment more on this, but he was so humble about it, didn't really talk about it. Dana and I discovered this by seeing like some newspaper articles later, you know. <laughs> so, next slide. Oh, he's a body, mind, and spirit guy. He always said, take care of your body. You've only got one. And here he is in San Diego with me. I think he's 84 here, 85. He still wanted to go to the gym every Sunday. Yeah. When I could pick him up and go, but never quit working out. Go ahead. <laughs> Dana says she didn't get those jeans. <laughs> um, There's a random picture of us at the beach and somebody was doing calisthenics, getting ready to go into the military. So he just walked up to that person and said, let me show you how to do this. <laughs> He's like 83, two years old right there. He's, what do you call those things? I forget what they're called in the military. Uh, 
Is it mountain climbers? Yeah, doing mountain climbers. Yeah. And that's like, I don't know, four years ago. But <laughs> Cal and Noor, can you hear me? I can see you guys. Yeah. Yes, we can. Yes, we are here. You can? Thumbs up? Yeah. Yes, yes, we're following. I have, I have them muted. You guys are muted. Okay, no, that's okay. Yeah. Just thumbs up. You guys can still hear me, right? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Okay, yeah. next slide. Uh, Carpe Diem, uh, something we talked about after that movie came out, Dead Poets Society. I talked to Dad a lot about that movie. He, he loved to go cycling on cruises, have a good time. I think that's him in Cuba on the right. Susan, correct me if I'm wrong. That's Susan in the photo, but had a great time. Just looks like they're having fun. You know, serious guy, but like Ken is asking me, how is he, how can he be so serious all the time? I'd like to have so much fun. I, I don't know, but that's, that's who he was. Just, that was pop. Next slide. I don't have any pictures of him snowshoeing, uh, Susan. I'd love to see those someday though. I know you guys had fun. He loved being poppy. That's what we called him. Um, and there he is with uh, Dana and the kids on the left with Max and his mountain on the right, lower right. And then with, uh, Josie Jackson and Max on the right. Is Josie on yours? I don't know if Josie's on. She's on. Is she? Okay, awesome. Hey, Josie. Hi. Next slide. <laughs> um, he was always contemplative, my dad. He was always thinking about something. You know, he's sitting on a chair uh, on the lower left in Kenya on a safari with me. I'm fascinated by wildlife. He would just like to sit there and think for hours. Um, on the bottom right is San Diego. He just liked to look at the ocean, read everything, any any sign, he would read it. And then that's us top right, just admiring the sunset, but really contemplative guy. Next slide. I never knew my dad to fear anything. Did dad ever did appear when you know of anything? Yeah. Oh, then he got another side. My dad was scared. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there, but I didn't even know that story. Right. So this is him doing a high ropes course that Susan ran. Um, I don't know how, how high he is there, 20 feet up in the air, but maybe that's me. I can't tell. But he would do the high ropes course. You know, he went through flight training, loved the roller coasters. Just never heard the guy ever express fear about anything. Yeah, he was from Yeah. He's the only 80 something year old on the roller coaster. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, Joe's. Love to travel. We counted up all our countries uh, as a family. I think dad's tally was 64 countries. Here he is with Susan on the Great Wall of China, of course. And Susan can tell us later is that the Gobi Desert? I'm not sure where that is, but I think it's in Central Asia somewhere. Um, but Susan, you can tell us later. Next slide. Um, he came to see me in Kenya. We went down to Tanzania, just always toasting something. He always had kind words to say. Next slide. Uh, love kids. There's a quote at the end, one of my favorite quotes. Reminds me of that. It says, a, you know, a well-rounded person should be able to change a diaper. <laughs> I wanted to get more stuff on here. He came to visit me when I was living in Nigeria, went ballroom dancing with me. You know, all the locals loved them, and, you know, they bring them their kids, and he... <laughs> So I'd be working and he'd be, I'd come home and he'd be hanging out with kids from, from the neighborhood. Amazing. Next slide. Uh, he was the most, one of the most hands-on people I've ever met in my life. He could not not get involved in something. On the left, I guess he's on an archaeological dig, um, dinosaur bones maybe, in the New Mexico desert. On the right, I'm not sure what that is. I think it's at the University of New Mexico where he would catalog the rocks. But just always love to be engaged doing something. Next slide. Um, really social person. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, he, it, it was easy for him to make friends. He would go out ballroom dancing. <laughs> the lower right, <laughs> that's him at uh, Belmont Village in Fort Lauderdale, his last uh, home. Uh, top left is his army uh, ranger friend, Jesse. I'm not sure if Jesse can make it on today, but they were good buds. Um, lower left is San Diego. Kimberly took great care of him. We take him out with uh, her friends and uh, top right is Kimberly and her friends. I'm not sure what event that was, a public library event or something, but that always found something to smile about. <laughs> Next slide. Um, I meant to add another favorite quote of his about war. 
if I paraphrase it, it would be something to the effect of for those people who don't know what freedom is, they don't know what war is, and why you have to fight. Mm. Nice hot. Mm. 22 years. Mm. Nice hot. Thanks, slide. Uh, yeah, well, hold it here. I didn't get a chance to embellish any of these slides with photos, but wait, go go back one. Oh, sorry. I think one of the quotes, next one. Yeah, he would be right now, if he were alive in here, he'd be going tough out, boy. You know, <laughs> toughest man I knew. Uh, it doesn't matter. You get hit by a car, you lay in there, you come over and be like, get up, tough out. You know? <laughs> uh, and it, uh, you know, he say, like, use your left hand. You know, I was telling Danny, Danny's in the back of my friend since kindergarten. If you had a really good game playing basketball and you had three or four points, you know, I, I sucked at basketball, he'd be like, yeah, next time use your left hand. <laughs> always challenging you. He always said, life is not fair. I never heard that guy complain not one time in my life, you know? And he, he was good at saying no. My dad would say, can I have that? that? No, why not? Because I love you and it's not good for you. I'm not buying you candy, you know? He's just really principled guy. Um, all right, next slide. You know, you drink all that My sister's calling me out about my bad energy drink habits. Uh, that's us playing Balderdash, I think, on the left, just uh -huh. laughing as a family. You, you love the good laugh, good natured guy, get on the scooter with the kids. Yeah, I mean, he loved being with you guys. Next slide. Not too many more, guys. Um, you guys love to go for a ride with me on Sundays? <laughs> and, uh, we made that our Christmas card one year. But yeah, hey, Pop, want to go for a drive? Yeah, you know, Pop, want to go? Want to go watch a ball game? Yeah, of course. He was always up for doing something. Next slide. Uh, love to hit the beach. This is San Diego, and uh, Dana and Ken brought him, uh, brought out. Moved him from New Mexico to San Diego. I think that's what this was. That was a chore. <laughs> Another time. Okay. But he lived real close to the beach in San Diego, and he loved to just go walk on the beach. I think he jogged for a number of years into his early 80s, mid-80s. Next slide. Love being outside. You couldn't go anywhere with him without him striking out a conversation with just random people. I got multiple photos of him just talking to anybody. So mm -hmm. here he is in San Diego. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Talking to somebody in a restaurant, you know, as we're walking by. Next slide. Uh, Christmas at Dana's a few years ago. The family, Joni's on the call. Rest in peace, Jerry. We love you. Uh, there's Graham and mom in the back. And Josie and Max and Dana and me and dad. Yeah. Next slide. Where's the Lillian's picture? Let's see here. Oh, and those pictures in there, Jack. Yeah. Uh, this was, I think, a trip we took. We flew to Vancouver or Seattle and drove back to uh, Los Angeles with Susan. Had a great time. I think we rented some bikes this day, if I'm not mistaken. Susan can correct me. 2009, May 30th. Yeah, I think that's when that was. Next slide. Uh, thanks so much, TJ. He loved his mountain. This is going up to the top of the mountain in uh, Albuquerque, Sandia Peak. Michelle, yeah, yeah. I remember this trip, yeah. Great trip. You'd love to take people up on that mountain and love that view and all the volcanoes. He'd tell you about all the geology and the lava and tectonic plates and just loved his geology. Next slide, please, Jamie. Uh, he was fascinated by everything. You know, he, I said he would read anything. He's looking out the window on the train. I think he's talking to Kimberly. He, he's riding a bike at 84, I think. I don't know if Kimberly's on, but on the right, riding through his neighborhood. <laughs> How many 84-year-olds do you see right. getting on a bike? <laughs> yeah. Some guy, some guy. Next slide. Uh, this is the senator's office that he volunteered in. I think he went up there, Susan, correct me if I'm wrong, once a week or twice a month and just did paperwork for the guy, correspondence, talked to visitors, but he wanted to be engaged. He'd go all the way up to Santa Fe. And work for the senator. I don't remember the senator's name right now, but you know, he'd write letters to the journal, Albuquerque Journal about bike lanes or about traffic safety, about whatever school systems, and then he'd go try and help the senator get some of that stuff done. You know, that was pretty admirable. Next slide, please. He gave tours of petroglyphs, the Native American art on the rocks near him. 
Um, he worked near uh, cl a close to a place called Petroglyph Monument, I think. And he worked with Bureau of Land Management. He'd go out there and record them, photograph them, write down all la latitude, longitude, you know, because these are wearing away or sometimes people will graffiti them, you know, and I don't know how old these are, several hundred years old, probably. Next slide, please. <laughs> Selfless guy. He had dementia pretty advanced at this point. We went to a baseball game in San Diego, a Padres game. And as we're walking there, he stopped and checked on homeless people to see if they're okay. Yeah, giving them money. <laughs> I'll cry if I read that. <laughs> he, he smiled at you when he never heard him complain on one bit. Nah. Anybody ever hear my dad complain? No, I don't. Nobody here has ever heard one complaint. I did hear the complaint about David smoking chocolate. <laughs> Jackie said he heard my dad complain about that. Dana, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you guys can hear us unless we're up near the microphone here, but there's Aunt Gay in the middle. Aunt Gay's here now. I don't know if you can see her. 97 year old Aunt Gay. We love you. Thanks for being here. We loved you. Next slide. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is like, Ken, these slides are for you, or these quick, like, he's a serious guy, but then he was always joking. I don't know, he loved joking around. <laughs> he should have been in theater, I think. I don't know, what do you think, Michelle? Michelle's still in here? What do you think? Yeah. Next slide. Next slide, all right. Um, we're almost done. So here he is with Dana. I think Grandma Josie and uh, Poppy. Where would that have been, Dana? Bethesda, Maryland, or... Spain, Spain. I was born in Spain. I think that's you. Is that me? That's you in Spain. Yeah, that's my Italian grandma. And my father. What's that? It's <laughs> baptism. It might be, but my point here was I won't read that quote to you on the right, but that quote reminds me a lot of my dad. There, I don't know any. I don't know a lot of things he couldn't really do. Um. Robert Heinlein, if I'm pronouncing that right, was also a naval officer. He became a writer. But my dad could change a diaper. He did plan strikes in the Navy as an intelligence officer. He, I don't know if he conned a ship, but he went through flight training. He was really good architecturally. He's the one that taught me to draw. I never saw him write a sonnet, but he's a great writer. He'd always criticize my writing and say, this could be better, Glenn. And Mrs. Ostry and uh, Mr. Burns, you're on the call. I mean, I had phenomenal English teachers at a uh, good council high school. I think it was in large part because my dad and my mom just drove me so hard to be good, a good writer, but he could do all the stuff on there. I never saw him set a bone. Grandpa could do that, but you get the point, right? <laughs> Specialization is for insects. That's, my dad would go get the encyclopedia. Remember then, if he didn't know pre-Google pre days, my dad would get up from the table, walk into the family room and get the encyclopedia. And he'd go, let's figure this out. Uh, that was that was why you did it back then before Google. <laughs> okay, next please, Jimmy. Uh, so we had these business cards made for him when he went to uh, the the first memory care unit because he you know didn't remember his name sometimes. But if people saw on a business card that he liked ballroom dance, hiking, geology, world travel history, it was easier for him to strike up a conversation. And we took him lawn bowling where everybody had a name tag. And so he felt good because they'd all be like, hey, Dick, how are you? And he'd be like, oh, great. And then you have to remember the names. They already wore names at. This might be a picture of him lawn bowling, but good times in San Diego. Uh, I think we're almost done. He was always just ready to go. There's his ring. We wound up losing that ring. I feel terrible about it. We don't know what happened to it after he went to uh, ER, but if we find it, we'll, we'll bury him with it. That's him in San Diego on the right. He always stopped to smell the flowers. No matter how busy he was, he was always stopping to smell the flowers. He never passed them up. I think there's another picture of that. Next slide, Jamie. There he is, another picture of smelling the flowers. Made, made time. Yeah. Remember what's important. Next. Uh, I think we're all done. Yep. Hey, Pat, Denise, they're on the call. I think Andrea's on the call. Thanks, Andrea. There he is in San Diego. Me and Andrea. And that's Kimberly's dog on the right. I think he knew all the dogs in the neighborhood. He would just go out and sit, and watch the ships go by in San Diego Bay. Just really like being there out in the sun with his Navy hat. Next slide. Uh, and there's his beloved mountains in New Mexico. He just loved being out there. Yeah. Is that it? 
Okay, so let's pause now. Jamie, can we uh, pause? I've got some Dick Yak trivia questions if anybody uh, wants to see if they can handle it. Should we do that or should we pause and let people say a few things about pop? The latter? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's pause. Okay. Um, thanks, Meta. So if we stop sharing screen. Yeah, I don't think so. Honestly? Yeah, they get a little harder. Exactly. They get a harder button. Um, maybe Mark Leno will have to call in and tell us how to do it. So we stop sharing. And then um, there's a stop share right there. Oh, you see it? The red oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. Yeah, there we go. And then if we pull that down, we can see everybody. Yeah, let me uh, do that for you. Okay. So you want to put that on here. See. Oh, if you go to, hold on, I just got to break that link, right? No, I'm going to. Hey, Mark, if you want to call us back. There we go. Okay. We're good. Okay. And can we go to uh, like gallery? So up in the view? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, awesome. Awesome. So can everybody still hear me? Um, yes. I think we need to turn our volume back up now. Yeah, we do that. Okay. Um, so thanks for being there remotely, guys. I just wanted to give you an idea of who our dad was and uh, what he meant to us. If you're on the call, um, you either love us or loved him. But hey, Stace. Wow. Hey, Amar. Barbara. Charles Siri's calling in. I don't think he was able to join. But should... Should we open it up here or let people remotely say something? I guess you can raise your hand, folks, if you'd like to say anything. Would anybody here like to say anything? And let me know, guys, if you can hear uh, us talking. Yeah, Sam, Ken, anybody here so far? No. Max, uh, my, my nephew Max would like to say something about my grandfather or his grandfather, sorry. Let me know if you can't, if you can't hear him, folks, okay? Hey, Marnie. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Go ahead, Max. You got the floor. Poppy was such an intelligent and personable man. I remember having the deepest conversations with him about history and the world as a well. whole. I always loved hearing his perspectives and lessons about life. When we realized he was losing his memory, I couldn't even leave it. He was one of the most intelligent and healthiest people I knew. I will always cherish the conversations and laughs we shared together. Every Christmas, we would talk for hours. He taught me so much. He was so easy going and just a happy guy. He would always keep his mind busy. I remember when he showed us all the gems at the museum he was volunteering at in Mexico. He knew what each one was and how old it was. One of the last great memories I have of him was when we went on the USS Midway aircraft carrier in California. He told me stories about when he served in the military and lived on one himself. I always remember Poppy and all the great memories, laughs, and knowledge she taught me. We love you, Poppy. Don't let it forget. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Very nice. How do you say that without crying, Max? Good yes. job. Very nice. Could everybody hear Max? Thumbs up. Okay. And over here too. Who's on over here? Uh okay. Hey Joe's. Hey Becca. Again, Tommy. Okay. Okay, great. Anybody else? Get in. I mean, I'm I'm a sack of potatoes. That's what he called me potatoes. And he when I was a little girl, and he would me over his shoulders and saying, Who will buy this sack of <laughs> So, um, he was a very loving father. He was also very serious, like one said, Help me with my own good advice. Always was there for me. He'd like always be useful. So, when he'd come in for Christmas, I could always count on him setting the table for, for everybody. And I'd find him under the table reading to the kids. Walking the dogs. He always liked to be busy. Um, when I went to Brazil with the family, he came and visited me, so he loved to travel. He was just a great dad. Could you all hear Dana? Thumbs up or down? Okay, good microphone. Okay. April, maybe not. Okay. We'll be conscious of that. We'll speak up. Okay. Alyssa, hey there. Wow. She looks tired. Anybody in here? Because otherwise we can go back to the screen. Oh, Amanda. 
Can I'm backing up first. Go ahead, ladies first. So, mm -hmm. I don't have much to say. I just wanted to say that Uncle Dick was one of the first extremely multi faceted type very interested people I ever met. And I just, I have the strongest memory on one of Dana's birthdays of him, of him teaching me how to salsa dance when I was like 10. And I swear, I like literally, I applied it wherever I could move forward. You know, I would salsa dance in public, ask people to dance with me. And I feel like that was all because what I learned from him and Aunt Anne and our beautiful family. But yeah, Uncle Dick was, he, I've never met a person like him. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Jeff. I first met my uncle. I was a teenager. He was a career military officer, which we never had in the family before. So I, as a teenager, I thought that was really cool. And as I got to know him, I remember him saying, because he was in military intelligence, he said to me once, he said, some of what I do ends up in the paper. So I thought that was cool. And but he would never talk about what he was doing. He was always tight, tight. But I have a feeling he knows what's in Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. Did you guys hear that about 51? Ron, any words about conversations with my dad in Iran? When we first met in Barnum, we were Jack and I were teenagers. We started to play ball and everything, getting into doing push-ups and working out. And the father was the one that hit me that he knew raw things. <laughs> but boy, anybody ever heard this was like 1967, 68. And he proved to be in a shape with milk. My God. Started up with the elevators. No shit. I love those. Yeah, Orange Julius is. I know he drank too. Yeah. Don't you want to let into your pet? Oh, sure. Just so the, the people out of talking can be seen. Awesome. Sorry. Thank you. Ron, you, last time I saw you at Christmas, you were talking about the, the Iraq story. And I don't know if you're at liberty to comment on that. Yeah, some of the things that he, you know, when we get together between my father and him, getting them together and then getting started to tell stories and we get the father started about some of the things he was involved in. It was incredible what some of the stories he told. Yeah, yeah dad worked at National Security Agency for a long time, NSA. So he had a t-shirt that said, my job is so secret, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> he couldn't really talk about it. But now, 30 years later, you're like, oh, you worked on that? You worked on that? It's pretty interesting. Yeah. So, Okay, this is uh, Jackson, my nephew, uh, Dick's grandson. All right, so uh, despite Poppy's Alzheimer's progressing when I was very young, I remember a lot about him. He was able to lift anybody's spirit and talk to them for an eternity. He was smart, but had the ability to interact with me like he was my best friend when I was little. Even into his 70s, I remember me and him wrestling in my room, and one time he rolled off the bed and fell hard on the floor. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was a big thump. And I'm all there wondering if he's okay. And he gets up laughing like he's not almost 80. Uh, it's just, you know, I remember on our trip to see him in New Mexico, he would go on morning runs every single day, again, well into his 70s. Um, he was always doing things that nobody else at his age could do physically and mentally. He was so knowledgeable in so many areas. It was like having chat GPT to answer any questions <laughs> you know, about history, fitness, vocabulary, you know, any word. Um, advice, anything. Um, and remember this, I'm, I'm so little at this time, I just can't imagine how he was for everybody else. Uh, he was always ready to make anybody laugh or throw in a joke in a tough situation to lightly move. And uh, looking back on pictures and videos and really brings back all the good times we had with him. And he will always be remembered. Thanks, Jack. It's nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'd love to get a copy of that. Mm -hmm. In, in fairness to people who are remotely participating, should we ask them now? Yeah. Because we'll be here as long as we want. But yeah. what do you guys think? Everybody's got things to do. It's Sunday. Um, and you got to unmute, uh, unmute your mic when you want to talk. I, uh, I think the hands raised is a good feature. I'm not sure I'm seeing any hands. Dan Dan Roberts. Roberts. Um, Dan, let me just introduce you before you say anything, will you? Um, Dan Roberts uh, is my friend from the Navy, and 
I almost dropped out of Intel Officer School. He kept me in. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. Uh, nice. Guys, again, I love to see you on better uh, circumstances, but <clears throat> thank you for uh, letting me join your family on this uh, sad event. Uh, what I want to share with you is that uh, Circle of Life, I had a grandson the same day that your dad passed. So I think it's kind of, you know, interesting to know that, hey, life goes around. So let's help some go. So you're going to their new life. We'll, 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 uh, we'll cherish you. Come up. And I know you also asked me to uh, do a joke to try to get a little levity, but I really couldn't wow. find one because I don't know your audience and your friends, but it, people who know me and Glenn, we joke all the time, constantly. I'm, every conversation is a joke. But one thing I don't think you knew is my father's name was Dick, and my little brother, or my older brother, Rich, went by Dick. And I'll share one funny story with you. <clears throat> um, my dad had a business, and uh, when people would call, <clears throat> They go, hey, let me speak to Dick. And my mom would say, do you want to speak to Big Dick or Little Dick? <laughs> and then you hear my brother yell across the hall, Ma! <laughs> so that's the only funny story, Levy, I'll put on your uh, occasion here with your passing your father. But I will tell you, I, a little bit I did know of him. He was a great man. Uh, pleasure to know him. And honestly, Glenn, a pleasure to know you. And uh, we're close friends, and I can't wait to see you again. Yeah, that's all I got. You for a cheap joke to lighten the mood, man. <laughs> uh, best I could do at that moment, brother. Love you, buddy. Thank you. I, I, I love you. Love you, bro. Anybody else that wants to uh, speak on the Zoom meeting? Thank you. Joan. Hi, Jody. I just want to send my love to everybody there. I wish I could be with you. Sorry for your sadness and your pain, but... You know, I'm here busy baking, ready to send stuff <laughs> whenever you need it or want it. Okay. Just right. love you all. Love Be strong. You. Love your dad. Jerry and I went to Albuquerque and he took us on that trip uh, to that mountain and we had dinner together. We had a great time. He was the best host. Very disciplined, but loving, you know, always. We liked him a lot. He was a real guy, a real honest guy. A pleasure. Okay. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Wow. Hey, Delenn, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Tommy, yeah, we can hear you, but can't see you. Let me. Uh... Yeah. Hey, sorry, my video thing isn't working, but let me, I'll just be real quick. One, uh, nothing but love to you and, and to Dana and to the entire family, all the grandkids and everything. And so on behalf of, of my mom, Rita, and you know our past father, Tom and, and Jackie, I just wanna tell you, know, you and Dana in particular, how much we loved your family, uh, love your family and, and love those times. And I'll, I'll throw a couple memories at you um, down in the basement of your house and your dad's with the Shackley products down there, if, if I remember the name of that right. Yeah. Uh, he was like edge on like protein and lean masks in like the 1970s and 80s. And uh, he really was, and I think you captured the slideshow, he was a Renaissance man before that term was really in vogue. And uh, he loved you too, uh, immensely, super proud of you. And uh, Dana, he loved your friggin' spirit. I can remember that. And I had that same spirit, as you remember, because I tried to saw down your banister when I was a little kid. But um, from from the Nevels, and uh, we just want to say we love you guys, and I know you're hurting. I think this is awesome what you did, but um, here for you, and you guys take care. Thanks for letting us be a part of this. Tom, thanks. If you have to go, real quick question for you. Um, didn't our fathers meet in the Navy in Rhoda? Yeah, they Thank did. You. I think before you and I were alive, maybe, or maybe you were alive, but Jackie and Dana were little, and that's where they met, the Yex and the Nevels, when uh, they were stationed together in Rota, Spain, circa, I don't want to say 1968 ish, 67, 68. Dana, when were you born? What year? Seven. 67. Seven. Seven. Yes. Yeah, so I think like when Jackie and Dana were babies, that's when they lived there. Yep. Yes. Yeah. 
I want to say your father picked my dad up at the airport when he landed in Spain and they became fast friends and until your dad passed. Yeah, I think they were best friends. Tom. Yeah, I think I think my dad and mom were the sponsor family for your mom and dad, if I remember that story correctly. The whatever years ago now, help me with the math, 57. It's crazy. Thanks for being there, Tom. I'm rooting for you, man. I put something on Facebook about you. He's our next admiral, hopefully. We're rooting for you, buddy. <laughs> All right, we're out here. All right, Tom, thanks. Susan, Susan, your hand raise. Oh, I see some hands. There, guys, just if you're not familiar with Zoom, there's a function called hand raise, I think, on here, isn't there? Um, and we'll see it. But go ahead, Susan, if you unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, we got to have, I asked her to unmute. She's there you go. So. Glenn and Dave Paul, it's so oh. good to see these wonderful pictures of Dick. I've been trying, sitting here enjoying it and wonder, uh, thinking about a humorous story that I could tell about Dick. One day we were cross country skiing and we came upon a, well, on our way home, we went by a natural hot springs and decided to go in, but we're not, there were a lot of people and we didn't have any swimming suits, but we did have some garbage bags in the back of the car. So we cut holes in the bottom for our legs and wrapped them up around our necks and went into the hot tub in garbage bags. And there's a great picture of it. I'll have to send it to you. But he was such a gentleman. We loved to travel together. We danced, lots of dancing. We danced in the Mongolian desert. We traveled a lot and I really miss him. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. I miss you. Thank you so much. I'm a chaplain. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do a blessing, I guess. Uh Okay. Any other hands raised out there? Jim Siri, cousin Jim. Oops. Jos oh, Josie. Yeah. Josie, let Jim, can you unmute yourself? And then we can go to Josie. I don't know how to do it. The, oh, Jim? I think I did it. Yep. Can you, can you hear, hear me? You? Yep. We can hear you. Okay. I just you know, want to give you all your family our the Siri condolences. I uh you know, I was very young at that time, and that really met uh, mm -hmm. Richard that much. And uh, but on behalf of my brothers and sisters, which were closer to his age, you know, thought highly of him, and uh, <clears throat> they were always, always, he was always in our minds during Christmas and so on. And uh, we just want to wish you all. You know, our, give you our condolences, and uh, he was very appreciated and loved by the Surrey family. So, yeah. nice. sorry, Chuck couldn't get on, but <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that's that's the Surrey commitment to you all, and we love you all. We love you, Jim, and we'll see you maybe in Berlin for Kent's internment. Right. Every time. <laughs> Get in touch on that. Thanks for being here. Okay. See you last summer. I meant to put in a picture of the Siri reunion. I just ran out of time. But for those listening on the Zoom, you know, 10 children tend to have a lot of progeny. So in 2001, I went to a Siri reunion and I think there was like 110 of us there, 120 of us. Does that sound right, Jim? Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. But thanks for being here, Jim. Okay. Josie has her hand raised. Hi. Josie. <clears throat> this is uh, my dad's granddaughter. As everyone already stated, Poppy was one of the most intelligent and level-headed people on the planet. Um, growing up, he lived out of state, so we didn't get to spend an immense amount of time with him. But I'm so fortunate that he was moved to Florida in his last few years, and I was able to spend some time with him in his facility. Um when we visited him in San Diego a few years back, he was already losing his ability to speak and it was COVID. So we weren't able to um, go inside and see him, but he was able to come to the fence outside and see us, <clears throat> you know, over the gate. And when we walked up, he knelt to the ground and started to cry. And even though he couldn't express his feelings in words, I knew how happy he was to see us and how much he loved us. So much so that he was trying to hop the fence to escape with us. Um, <laughs> I spent a lot of time with him in his facility in Florida, 
And in his state, it was hard to tell if he recognized me or really knew what was going on, but I like to believe he did. And when I visited him, he would sometimes smile at me and squeeze my hand when I held it. And one of the many traits that I'll remember about him is his love for music and dancing. Um, in my last few times with him, we would go upstairs in his facility where they would have like live music for the residents. And um, it would sometimes bring him to tears to listen to the music and he would clap his hands. It was like one of the only times he was really responsive. Um, and the very last time that I saw him with my mom, we were dancing in front of his wheelchair to try to get him to stand up because, you know, he was always making weird noises and wouldn't want to get out of his chair. But I love Poppy so deeply and his spirit will live forever through our memories. I think uh, to Lupe. Thanks, Josie. Jose. Josie, quick update. Uh, can you tell everybody what you're studying and how, how it's going out there? Uh, yeah. Started? going really well. I'm studying astrophysics. Um, it's tough and I'm drowning in work constantly, but I love it. And I love my school and I love Colorado. Joe's dad and I would always contemplate how the universe could be call called infinite, but still expanding. So if it's still expanding, it can't be infinite. Um, so if you, if you yeah, it's constantly that, that, yeah. expanding. Um, <laughs> It depends what your definition of infinite is, I guess. I don't know. See, that's something we contemplated a lot over cigars. Do we need to find out? Okay. <laughs> All right. Tolu. Thanks, Jeff. Tolu, you Hello, can't go Glenn. on video. Yep. No, so, I'm sorry. My connection isn't so strong, so my video isn't so clear either. Okay. Thank you for All having right. me on this call. I really appreciate that. Hello to everyone. And my heartfelt condolences to you, Glenn, and the entire family. I told my sons about dad's passing, and I told my mom and siblings, they send their deepest condolences. Now, I can't remember if I physically met dad when he was in Nigeria, but of course, I remember him over the years. And one thing that sticks out is how much he accomplished I can say he died an accomplished person, and I can only hope that when I'm at the age he left, I would have done enough, more than enough with my life as much as he has. My thoughts are with you. You are all in my prayers. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Tolu. Tolu, can you say something, uh, a very quick sentence or two or prayer in your language or the many languages you speak? <laughs> Okay, I'll speak my native language. I am Yoruba. I'm from Nigeria. And I will say, Ki Oluwa, Ki Owa Kwe Oluwa is God. That means may God be with you. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, anybody else out there? <clears throat> Glenn so and much. Ricky are uh, out here. Uh, Mick, Mick and Reed are out here. Mick and Reed are. Great to see you. How are you? Oh, fine. And from all the Neville Taylors, we are so sorry for your loss. Dick was a great guy. I have known him since Rhoda, Spain. I won't say how old, how many years ago that was, but we were all pretty young. And I remember the day you were born, Glenn. And I remember later, your father used to call you the mayor of Bottle Court. <laughs> <laughs> mayor of what, Rita? The mayor of what? The mayor of your court, where you live. Oh, Bonnell Court, England. yeah. Bonnell Court, guess, yeah. He called you the mayor of the court. <laughs> I guess the apple doesn't so fall too far from the tree. Fun. He was so funny. Uh, intelligence and funny and just a nice, nice, genuine person, a true naval officer. Um, I just loved him. Life well lived, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Thanks, very proud Thank to, you. Very proud to have known your dad and, and wish we'd been able to spend more time. But uh, you know that we really enjoyed seeing you. We wish to see more of Dana. And uh, we missed Dana. Missed you guys. Is, she, is she back there someplace? Is Dana, is Dana there? Okay. Hi, Dana. Um, Love you. So yeah. 
plenty of memories on the on the Neville side, as you know, and uh, yes. it's great to be able to catch up with you, even under these circumstances. And it looks like you have Wonder Family gathered around you, and uh, and uh, just uh, it, when I joined the uh, what is it, the Naval Security Group, I guess. Back in the day, that was uh, uh, that was something special for uh, you and Bob, Bobby Carpenter and yeah. all the guys and, and Tom and Lucky and those kind of people, you know. Yeah. That uh, Navy family, it's like real family, you know. You move around the world with people, you get to know them and love them, feel like yeah. brothers. Reed, I don't know if you heard Dana say it, but I think Dana said that Jackie was her very first friend. <laughs> Jackie and Dana met. Uh, I think at Jackie's third birthday party, and they were very good friends from then on, even though Miles separated them. I can remember our ski trips with you guys, and uh, Dana would rock the ski lift, and Glenn was always following the rules, and he said, the <laughs> sign says, don't rock the ski lift. <laughs> I I gotta hear that story again, Rita. Just keep outing me. I thought I heard that story for a lot of time. It's haunting me. You're not supposed to rock the chairlifts, people. Right? <laughs> Dana wasn't just rocking it. I was little older than they was. They were, so I was gonna fall out. I was scared. Yeah. Oh, I'm not like my dad. I was scared of them. <laughs> um. Chaplain Marion just showed up. Chaplain Marion was with dad when he passed um, and the Catholic Charities or Catholic Hospice came and they did a veteran ceremony for dad, a music ceremony, a blessing. And um, Chaplain Marion is super busy, but she just stopped by the house. Um, I don't know if anyone else would like to say something, but since she's so busy, could we please let her do a quick thing? Yeah. And then if anybody else remotely wants to say anything, we could conclude after that. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Come in, get some gifts so they can see you there. Thank you for being here. Sure. Thank you. Welcome to the hot seat. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Richard. You know, um, yeah, my name is Marion. Um, and um, I'm blessed to be a hospice chaplain. And I get the opportunity uh, that I say to... Um, to listen to love stories, you know, and so when I met uh, Dana, and, and it was a, a long week for you, right? And what a sacred, holy time to be present when someone is transitioning, right? And um, it is when we live in the present moment, right? When just being there, you know, watching your dad breathe, right? Mm. It's a, a journey, right? And it's uh, the God of our understanding, it's time, you know, and so, but you were present. And uh, I say, uh, you know, if we didn't love much, right? Um, well, we wouldn't hurt, we wouldn't suffer, but you would never not want the love, right? And so during that time, it is sometimes a happy, sad time, um, you know, not for, um, Richard suffered anymore, right? Not to suffer, um, but uh, who's left behind? And it's a message to all of us, right? How do we live in the present moment? So, um, so I have a couple of things to, to say that, you know, we, um, and, and Dan was saying we have to, it's a celebration of life. And I can see with everyone's here and you're um, telling stories, right? Because memories and lives live on and that's beautiful. And so we acknowledge uh, life, the person who's died, uh, and it means really applauding their life, right? And rejoicing in the fact that they've lived, right? It's beautiful. But we're reminded that grief is the natural reaction to loss. And grief is both a universal and a personal experience, right? And so uh, be gentle with yourself, take time with yourself uh, as, you, um, as you journey huh, in this process. So let us pray, God of many names, Mystery beyond our naming, hear our prayer. We come to you through one another. We come to you in our grief and our sadness. We come to you seeking wholeness. We thank you for the gift of life. From the moment of birth to the moment of our last breath, we live amidst the wonder and beauty of all life. We thank you for the gift of love. 
for the wonder of human relationships, the ability to know another and be known, to accept another and be accepted, to live in depth of meaning together. Hear these words from this Australian Aboriginal proverb. We are all visitors in this time and place. We are just passing through. Our purpose there is to observe, to learn, to grow, to love, and then we return home. So I knew uh, we had uh, some Navy experience, right? So I found this kind of poem. Live life as a boat. If a boat spends too long tied up in harbor, it misses the sunrises and sunsets, the crashing waves, the singing gulls, and the purpose for which it was created. The spirit within us needs more nourishment than most of us provide. Let go of the moorings and seek open water. And um, where's Max? Where's Max? So Max says uh, his uh, granddad was talking a lot about history. He said it'd be the, now the legacy lives on with Max. So I have this old Roman philosopher, Seneca. This is what he writes. In the presence of death, we must continue to sing the song of life. We must be able to accept death and go from its presence better able to bear our burdens and to lighten the load of others. Out of our sorrows should come understanding. Through our sorrows, we join with all of those before us who have had to suffer and all of those who have yet to do so. If another day be added to our lives, let us joyfully receive it, but let us not anxiously depend on our tomorrows. So we grieve the death of our loved ones we accept them and hold them on to our memories as precious gifts. And I found another word, uh, Leah Bastalia used to be called a love, love doctor. That's back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. He's uh -huh. a motivational speaker, but he says, I know for certain that we never lose the people we love, even to death. They continue to participate in every act, thought, and decision we make. Their love leaves an indelible imprint in our memories. We find comfort knowing that our lives have been rich by having shared their love. Amen. Huh? So, uh, Let's honor Richard, and uh, if people are comfortable in doing so, we'll um, say the Our Father. Mm -hmm. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Guys, the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Rest in peace. Huh? May his memory be a blessing. That's so much. Yeah. I'm sure you yeah. Celebrate, huh? Mm -hmm. Celebrate his life, right? So many friends, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's great. And family. Yeah. Do you say it? Yeah. yeah. You said, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> folks, thank you for having spent this time with us. It's been about an hour, not rushing anybody away at all. I put this on for three hours. If you have to leave, thank you for having been here. If you want to raise your hand, we're still here. To talk about pop. We're going to be here for a while. Oh, okay, Noor. Uh, Noor okay. and Cal. So it's me. Um, the last time I saw your dad, we were together in San Diego. And at that moment, we had dinner together. And was it was the initial time when he was started to um, to be confused uh, on occasions. But we had a very very good dinner. Uh, and uh, also the other part is for me he represented the ideal American, handsome, intelligent, curious, 
and very loving. And he was very funny because also we celebrated our birthday in June together, although there were a few years difference, but in fact, there were only a few days between us. And it was really, really great. So I miss him very much because I felt connection and honesty. And that was, if you want, the biggest uh, connection that I had with him and your family. Doc, um, uh, Noor, anything? Good to see you. Uh, Dana says, hi, uh, I just want to tell him about you uh, real quick, everybody who doesn't know you. Noor and Khaldun were our neighbors in Potomac, Maryland, and uh, we've been very close since 1978, I think. And uh, hopefully I was an easy patient for you, Doc, but Dr. Nasuli was uh, my doctor, I think, functioning as such for many years, and hopefully it was easy, Doc, for you. Uh, oh, you're, okay. you're okay with my energy during habit, right? <laughs> as much grief as my family gives me, it's good to know. Okay. <laughs> with love. We love you. Thanks. I see Christian Fletcher. Can I introduce you before you say something, Christian? Do you have your hand up? Yeah. I don't, but you can introduce me. I'm, I'm happy to say <laughs> I'm happy to say a word or two to this fine group. Well, your hand I saw a hand on, on your screen, Fletcher. It's meant to see you. Oh, it was the mouse. The mouse well, not to put you on the spot, Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just did. We went to uh, University of Pennsylvania together. We were in ROTC, and uh, Christian and I both went into naval intelligence. Uh, we were both out in Hawaii a little while, but at the same time, our ships. And then I uh, both went to Southern Command later in Miami. And then Christian got out and became an attorney. Last I heard, you were like a judge, Christian, but thank mm -hmm. you for being here, man. I'd love to reconnect. Back over to you, man. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed hearing everything. And a lot of you don't know me, and I don't know a lot of you, but I, I did get to meet Glenn's dad in the 90s when, he, when we were uh, stationed in Miami together. And um, of all the positive things that I've heard tonight uh, or today, I, I definitely well, strongly agree. But don't forget what a gentle, gentle person he was, too. You hear about how uh, a Renaissance man and very strong and tough and never complained. Those are all true. But I, I took away from my interactions with him, which for few, was that he was just a gentle, gentle fellow. And uh, as strong as he may have been, as tough as he may have been, he was a sweetheart, um, uh, as I recall. <laughs> and uh, uh, I hope everyone remembers that about him, because I certainly do. Nice, Christian. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, what do they say? So, what is that quote? Like, lions don't need to roar? No, maybe. Yeah. Guy. maybe I'm yeah. not implying that he was silently tough or you know could knock you over. I mean, really, he was gentle and gentle, uh, just in the in his bearing, in his the way he listened, the way he interacted. And uh, um, I know you all know that, but I wanted to remind you. Thanks, Chris. That was nice. I know you're a good lawyer in court because you're a great extemporary speaker, Chris. That was great, man. So you know, I wrote that. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Over to Alyssa. Hi, everybody. Wish I could be there, but I just wanted you to know that I'm thinking of you, and I wanted to share my uh, lasting memory of Uncle Dick was that he was not only what Christian was just saying, he was incredibly warm and loving, but he was one of the best listeners I've ever met in my life. He was such a good conversationalist he took such an interest in what you had to say and he was so genuinely interested in just connecting with people and I just loved that about him um and I will miss him dearly um I'm thinking of you guys I'm thinking of you Glenn and Dana and I wish I could give you all a hug and Aunt Gay I see you up front and center and you look beautiful what is that? That's nice. It's because of her, that word. Because I drove her car around her house. So <laughs> thank you, Bug. <laughs> Thanks, Bug, for giving your sister your car so she could be here. Huh. <laughs> it looks yeah. like, yeah, if everybody could mute their mic if they're not talking, that might help. I think we're getting some feedback. But, yeah, uh, Glenn? Cousin Jim, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I look forward to seeing you and your family in Berlin. Just let us know when, and I'll be there. 
We'll be there. I missed a call from Charles. I guess he wasn't able to get on Zoom, but I'll call him back and uh, hope to see you soon, Jim. Okay. Thank you for being on here today. Uh, I God. send you all of you my love. <laughs> Likewise, Jim. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, Linda, we got to catch up. I see you up there. Mr. Burns, it was great to see you. I don't know if Mrs. Ostry's on. Mr. Burns was uh, my high school teacher. All right, get Council High School. Mark Katz. Oh, you got your hands up. Dr. Katz. Go ahead, Mark. Kindergarten friend. <laughs> Bill, I got to know who Bill is. Who's Bill? Is that Bill Mellon or Bill who? But we'll come back to you, Bill. You're going to be on the hook. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, I think just a, a couple memories of your dad dating probably back to 1975 when we met in kindergarten, along with Danny and Mark Lenowitz. Um, First, it's nice to be reminded of those Shackley shakes in the basement of your house in Benel Court. I haven't thought about those in probably 45 years, but a lot of nice memories. But like you said, um, your dad, we can always count on to be the permanent quarterback in our tackle football games in the soccer fields of Beverly Farms Elementary School. And I haven't thought about that in a while, but he always uh, sort of stepped up when we were sort of, you know, running around the soccer fields. Um, had a rifle arm. And um, I mean, I think I, I didn't see your dad again until you guys came to visit me in Kenya. Um, but I just remember what a great time we had together, me, you and your dad, and a bunch of other people. And um, you're talking about your dad just <clears throat> being friends with everyone and talking to everyone. And I remember him just chatting up everyone in Kenya um, and also him being just completely unflappable, just the coolest guy. Didn't matter what we were doing in Kenya. And there's some pretty hairy roads in Nairobi. Um, he's just always even keeled um, and always easy going and always asking me how I was doing and uh, really genuine and really warm. So Anyway, I've got great memories of him and my thoughts are with you and Dana and your family. Thanks, Mark. That's hey, so Glenn, nice. I'm going to add into that because I can't seem to figure out how to raise the hand. <laughs> You're the one who got us uh, scored away, Mark. I know. So, you know, just to add in what Mark Katz just said. So Dan and myself and Mark, you know, we grew up playing. Uh, I never played football. I watched, you know. But the uh, watch all the other things that you would do and participate. But the one thing I think that you're missing here is looking at you and hearing everything you're saying is that you've actually become your father. You know, if you think about what we all were back then, your dad wouldn't let you do anything until you did all your pull ups. And it wasn't just the Shackley shakes. It was the vitamins, too. But you always had to work out. You're always in shape. But if you think about it, you've actually followed in the same footsteps and a lot of the things that he did in life he inspired into you and i see it now like listening to you and just hearing about your career and your friends and everybody that came and talked about what you did in intelligence and navy it's like i'm listening to your father but i'm also listening to you so i think you should uh you know, think about how he's left a mark here not only on everybody on this call but really you yeah for sure appreciate that Appreciate that, Mark. Mark and I used to walk to school every day together down Post Oak Road to Beverly Farms. And uh, when did you find our vitamins? Yeah, we used to find the vitamins that Dana threw in the bushes. Right. Uh, Exactly. Right. Right. So much. Tell on the three childhood friends because I was in that kindergarten class too. Can you guys hear Danny? Yeah. Another kindergarten friend. Okay. Just briefly, you know. I remember those football games. Your dad definitely had the rifle up an arm for all of us eight-year-olds. Sometimes you kept getting off. Because you would just run circles around everybody. Um, but from your dad, he was very reserved with me. But I realize now, because I know he boxed and he was an athlete, and I, I lived his memory through you mostly. Um, but I've had the pleasure to be with him and you over time in the last few years too. But I remember this. I remember, I want to clear something up with the audience. We played, we played football in the backyard and he was the quarterback 
and I slipped on the wet grass because we didn't let conditions stop us, and I broke my wrist, but nobody knew I was broken. So I went up to Commander Yak. He was only Commander Yak. <laughs> Um, and he's like, I think he might have said, tough it out or something like that. He's so, he definitely didn't set the bar. <laughs> in the basement where there were pictures of bodybuilders everywhere in the triceps and like, I've never seen it. And you were aspiring to this bodybuilder figure. Your dad was this behemoth of a guy. Picked me up over his head and went like this. And then in discipline, because he never ever raised his voice around me, ever. Threw me through you because he would let you know, so me until I couldn't breathe. <laughs> but he was you that's me, and I know boxing lunches. And he was the last one of his leadership and because now <laughs> but on the lighter side, what I mostly remember is having dinner at your house with your mom and your dad, who were the coolest by far. And um, hey, Ma. like who I got to be at dinner with, and your dad would always say grace and thank the Lord or whoever was listening, for me, the nice Jewish boy, for being <laughs> uh, it felt so special just being named, I gotta tell you. And then I proceeded to snark milk through my nose and all the things because your family has always been my favorite and funniest. And I couldn't agree with my friends Mark and Mark um, anymore. And I would say what Mark just said about his memory, Glenn, you, you have Surpassed but become your dad in so many ways, and and we all love you. I love you. So, and Dana, you know, I love you. Dana was a fun one, Glenn was always picking up. So, like, yeah. Wait, all about you. the K car. K car, Dana forgot the Mike Rothman story already, Mark. By the way, we called her out on last night, but I gotta call Danny out on some. We, I might have pummeled you boxing, but you were also a brown belt in karate at that time, weren't you? Yeah, so <laughs> I think in second and third year of wrestling, when you uh, weighed me by 30, you got some vengeance off me, did you? <laughs> All right. Um, this is going longer than I thought, but this is great. Um, anybody else? So Thank you so much. much. Say something. Oh, this is Raphael. Yeah, so I, I believe I know everybody here in the room, and some people I don't know over there are on the Zoom call, but. Uh, it was kind of a, a father figure to me. I, I, I met Glenn's family when, when we were really young, and, and I stayed with uh, the family for, for many different opportunities. Um, and Dick would visit and with family in Venezuela many times. We spent many Christmas together. Many, you know, he went to my wife that went to, to visit us for different occasions, and, and really he was like a father figure uh, to me. Um, and I, you know, because he and my friend and, and my dad were also uh, friends, you know how smart he was. Uh, but I think the most important thing to me uh, when I think about it was uh, how special he would always make you feel. You know, it, it was never about him. It was about making you feel uh, important and welcome. And, um, that's something that I always appreciate. I have many memories um, from from Dick being always he he would call me Hepacito, uh, and that's a little boss. So I guess he wanted me to call him uh, the big boss. So I call him and just calling his Venezuela son. So um, you know I, I learned really a lot you know, from from Dick and um, just, you know, what a great person he was. And just to say something else, because he was only child, I I can let you know, and I know you know, that the Nocito family or Anne's side of the family was, you know, like uh, his family, like his, you know, that was so important for him. So just wanted to go ahead.
Uh, and for the record, we once asked my dad, or a journal, an interactive journal, asked who is the most interesting person you've ever met in your life, and my dad's response was Raphael's father, <laughs> Dr. Campo. Pretty interesting why why he said all that, but awesome. Thank you so much. Um, before we go, if nobody has anything else, who's the Bill? That's on there. I can't see. <laughs> Bill, I'm calling you out, man. Is it Bill Mellon? Or your camera? Maybe. Oh, uh, I know. I know what you did, Bill. You just turned off your camera and went to watch some basketball or something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, 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 Ma. Hey, Linda. All right, Mr. Burns. We got to get together again with Mrs. O. I think your mom's uh, trying to say. Uh, um, are you trying to say something or unmute? Okay. Well, can, can else? you hear me? Yeah. Uh, what? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to everybody for their participation. Thank you. Thank you for being there with Graham, too. I think Graham's right on your right, isn't he? Thanks, Dr. Frank. Uh, Marnie, welcome back. I think we're going to conclude. That was awesome. Wish you guys could be here for some pie. From Bill to everyone. Can't unmute. Um, Bill? Put in the text. Oh, there's. Is it Bill Mellon? <laughs> Sweet Bill. It's oh, it's Mystery Bill. Yes? Is that yes? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. We should have kept it. I'm just noticing we should have kept the chat up. Oh, if you scroll down. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's Bill Mellon. Your southern union commander, uh, flight, uh, helicopter pilot, he just told us a great story about his bird going down and then saving the whole crew in the water of seven, eight people, Bill. Getting an award for that. Love you, buddy. Never never leave somebody behind. That's you. All right. Um, we can probably minimize the chat. Anybody else here? We play you guys for. What's that? Do you need Yeah, let me let you go. We'll play trivia here. Get some of these. Scott, thanks for sticking around. Um, the home version? Yeah, I don't want to keep these going unless they want to play. If you guys want to stay on, we'll play Dick Yak trivia. But I don't know. You guys got things to do if you want. We'll, we'll keep it on. Who's ready? Hey, Amar. Okay, Bill, great to see you. Hi, Megan. We'll catch up. And Linda, you haven't said anything, but I'm dying to catch up with you. Thank you all. For being here for the celebration of life for Dick Yak. Appreciate hey. you. Love you. Linda, may not be interesting. Oh, Lynn, does Linda want to say something? Uh, yeah, I'll say something. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Last, I just the last you know, words of that. I, I just want to echo a little bit about what Mark said, which is it's so wonderful to have a family that you can see so much of Dick's qualities in. And I'm just so happy that, you know, we're all part of this big family. And I want I want from the Bavona girls to to tell you how much we love you and miss you and our hearts are with you at this time. Thank you, Linda. Thanks so love much you. for having this available for us. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for taking time out of your days to be on. Okay, so thanks all, I guess this will conclude the celebration of life ceremony. Um, if you wanna stay on, please do, but if not, um, please keep in touch. Okay. Great to okay. see everyone. God bless Thank you. One love. One love. Thank you so much, Jamie. It's not What would he have done without you, man? He needs my peculiarity. He's a must. I think it worked out well. Yeah, I think it worked out well. Josie, did you get a quick steam? What'd you, you okay? <clears throat> What'd you say? Did you get a good Did I get good skiing? All right. Did you get hurt? Yes, we got oh, hurt. Oh, did I get hurt? Yeah, I tore my MCL. I can't hear you guys anymore. 
Okay. Love you. I can't hear you. Stay on. Okay. Does can you hear know. me? Yeah, I can right now, but I couldn't before. It hurts, Cam. Yeah, I tore I tore my MCL, but it's really it's really minor. It'll heal on its own. Okay. Keeping the grades up. Trying to. I'm uh, going to. Okay. All right. All right. Love you, Max. Should Love I you too, Josh? I think we might wind up signing off from here. Hey, Mark. Hey, it's Andrea. Okay, bye. Andrea Scott. Love you, Joe. Love you. Hey, Mark, are you still there? It's Scott hey, Smith. Hey, Jay. Hi, Scott. How are you? Hey. Nice to see you. Hey. He, he brought his guitar. All right. Sorry, my name. Oh, that's awesome. What's going on, eh? Not much. How are you? Can't believe I made it through that without crying all the time. That was nice. Yeah, it's rough. That's up. I got nice. friends that need to leave. Say what again? I got, friends, I got friends that need to leave, so let me uh, me send them off properly, and I got to pay this guy. Oh, we'll be in touch when the dust settles. All right. See my chemo treatment going on. Mm -mm. Be well. Oh, All right, eh? Good to see you. Big hug. Oh, you're at Gay. Hello. Hey, Gay. Oh, wait. Here, let me do this real quick. <laughs> Auntie Gay. Hey, Gay, look who it is. Andrea. Hey, Gay. Hey, hey. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice yeah. to tell her hello. Danny. See Danny? <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Miss yeah. you, eh? We'll talk good. soon, okay? All right, take care. All right, Peace out. Bye -bye. Peace out. Okay. Bye.